Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, author of Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms. And today I want to talk a little bit about properly sealing um, sort of an ad hoc Faraday cage, which a lot of people like to use these galvanized garbage cans, which are great. I've tested them. As long as you properly seal the lip around the can, uh, they do a very good job. You can get about 50 dB of shielding out of them, which is plenty to protect electronics. The problem is that if you don't seal the lip and you just you know, seat the, the lid on top of the can, the, the seam around the top of the can acts as a pretty efficient antenna and it leaks the RF energy inside um, and you really only get about 10 to 15 dB of shielding without it properly sealed. And that's not enough. So what we typically do, and I've done this in other videos, is we run a, a big uh, strip of conductive tape around the outside lip and that works fine. It's cheap. You can go to Lowe's and buy a roll of that tape for, I don't know, $5 or something. Uh, just some aluminum tape works fine. You don't need to buy the expensive copper tape. Um, the trouble with that, as many people have pointed out, is it's a pain in the neck. Every time you want to get inside the can to take something out or put something in, you have to pull off all that aluminum tape and that ends up cutting your fingers and it's just a hassle to deal with. So a lot of people have come up with some clever ways, everything from using like Brillo pad type material, um, conductive mesh, all different kind of things that they, they stuff up inside the lip of the can or tape inside there to try and seal it up well. You know, that also is just sort of mediocre for solution. It gets torn up over time. It's just not particularly effective either. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd look at conductive gaskets. So I ordered about, oh, I guess about 20 different types of gaskets. Um, and these are really just meant uh, for this type of application. They're adhesive on one side and they're conductive all the way around. And so what you do is you just treat them as a piece of tape. You put them either inside the lip of the lid, so inside here, or you could put them at the top of the can here just underneath the, the roll here. So I think I'm going to put them on the inside lip of the can. It just seems to me like that would be a little bit better seal. That way it'll seal with that roll. You'll get a nice tight seal. And I bought a bunch of different kinds. I want to see how well they work, and, and they're all different sizes. Some of them are, you know, are, are very thin, maybe a quarter inch in terms of width, and some of them are thicker. Um, some of them are really wide. I, I guess the widest one I have is probably something like this. It looks to me like it's about two and a half inches wide. Um, so I want to try out, I'll try out most of these. Some of the tiniest ones I may or may not see how they fit, but I'll try out most of them. I'll see which one gives me the best seal and then I'll take some measurements and I'll see how well it protects. Okay, so the goal of the whole experiment is to find one seal that will work well for a galvanized garbage can um, that people can use to sort of seal up where that way you can just take on and off the lid without having to pull off a bunch of tape. All right, so I will first take a set of measurements. I'll just pick one frequency and I'll take a, a measurement with the can um, unsealed so that you get an idea of sort of what the baseline is we're trying to improve. And then I'll take one of the the best one I can find and I'll, I'll put it inside the lip of the can and I'll take a set of measurements on video for that one so you can see what the improvement was by having that gasket. All right, okay, so I'll get everything set up and then we'll do the experiment. All right, so the first measurement I'll take is an open air measurement. Just put the spectrum analyzer on a chair, tuned a frequency generator into 100 megahertz, which I think is a reasonable test frequency for what we're doing here. And what we'll do is just take a value uh, and then we'll be able to compare that value to when we put the spectrum analyzer inside the trash can to see how much shielding we're getting. All right, so let me go ahead and turn on the signal generator. And you can see the signal level rise in here a little bit. All right, so again, for the open air value then, go in here and take a look. Looks like it is right at minus 60 dBm. So, Minus 60 is our open air value, and what we'll do is we'll put the, the spectrum analyzer inside the trash can and see what the trash can provides by itself, and then we'll seal up the lid with the best gasket I can find, and we'll see what that does for us. Okay, so the second measurement is with the spectrum analyzer inside the trash can, but no sealing around the lip, um, no, no tape and no gasketing, and let's see how the trash can does by itself. So I will turn on the signal generator. Turn it off. I'll let, that will let the spectrum analyzer capture the peak. We'll pull it out and see what levels we've got. I'll zoom in here so you can see.
All right, so it looks like we got down to a level of about minus 77, which we started at minus 60, we got to minus 77. So we're getting about 17 dB of shielding. So that's pretty good. Um, that's not enough, certainly not adequate. We'd like about 40 or 50 dB of shielding out of these trash cans. So we got about 17 dB. Um, so now what we'll do is repeat the experiment, but we'll do it by sealing up the can. I'll try out, I don't know, 10 or 12 of these gaskets that look promising. And the one that works the very best, I'll go ahead and show you on video and we'll see how its levels look. All right, so what I've done is tried out a bunch of the different gaskets to see how well they worked. Um, both, it's really driven by the geometry of the gasket, how well it seals the lid. And I put the gasket right up in the very top part of the lid and I'll show you how I did that so you can see how it seals up. It ends up the lid fits nice and tight, but it doesn't really interfere with the opening or closing so you shouldn't wear out the gasket by pulling it on and off, which was my worry about putting the gasket on the outside as you might have braided uh, after pulling it a few times. So anyway, we'll go ahead and run the measurement. I got the spectrum analyzer set up. Again, we're at 100 megahertz. I'm going to turn on the signal generator. I'll turn it back off. We'll capture the peak. My expectation is, if it works as before, we won't see a signal on here. It will have blocked all of the signal. Yeah, and indeed that's exactly what happened. So if you zoom in here, what you see is you can't find a detectable signal at all at 100 megahertz. It's down at about minus 112 uh, dBm, which is 52 dB below where we started at uh, when we first had the signal generator on. So, so the properly sealed can provides greater than 52 dB of shielding at 100 megahertz, which is expected. The cans do a very good job when they're well sealed. So what I'll do just to show that the analyzer is working, because I always like to double check, I'll turn on the signal generator and we should see that original peak come back up. And we do. We can see it pop back up and it again goes right back to minus 60 dBm. So the test is repeatable. All right, so again, we ran three cases. We did an open air measurement, gave us minus 60. We put it inside the trash can without the lid um, and we got minus 77 or something like that. So we got some level of shielding. Um, not enough, but some level. Certainly the can helps. And then we properly sealed the can up using um, the best gasket I could find that seemed to fit it well and we got greater than 52 dB of shielding again at this frequency of 100 megahertz. What I'd like to do is just show you how I attach the gasket so if you repeat this with your own can you'll have an idea of how I did it and this seemed to work very well alright so I'll zoom in here in a second but what I did is I took a very small gasket and I uh, stuck it all the way around the very inside of this lip here now it actually took two gaskets, it's spliced in one spot down here, but I did it very tight so that there's not a, a noticeable seam or gap, but it just goes all around the inside of the, of the lid there. Let me zoom in so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Hopefully the video will let you see that. Yeah, let me go up towards the top. Right, so you can kind of see it right there. The gasket is this material right here. Uh, right inside the corner of the lid and it's a very small gasket I'll put the details uh, on the website uh, so if you want to get some of the gaskets you can but basically I just stuck it all the way around I cut the second gasket to, so that it would butt up against the first one and I think it's pretty durable I think it'll do fine um, it lets you open the can uh, without messing up the gasket so it certainly seems easier to use than conductive tape uh, and based on these tests it seems to work very well Okay, so I just want to summarize what we did today. We took an ad hoc Faraday cage and we measured its effectiveness um, without, without sealing up the lip. And I always tell people, you really have to seal up the lip of these cans to get high frequency protection. And we saw that it, did, it offered some level of protection, maybe about 17 dB. Um, we then sealed up the lip of the, of the trash can lid. And I showed you how that's done. You put a little gasket inside the very inside of the rim there. And it goes over the can just like it would normally um, but it helps seal right along the top of the can where that, gap, where that little gap appears. Um, by doing that, you get a, a very good level of protection from the can. In our case, I couldn't even measure the signal, so it was greater than 52 dB of shielding, uh, which is adequate to protect any electronics, really. So the idea of the, the whole experiment was to show that maybe there's an easier way than using conductive tape to seal up the cans. People get tired of having to pull that tape on and off. It is a pain. I agree with that. 
Um, but it was the only thing at the time that, that was convenient and easy to do. So what I'll do is um, I, I tested a bunch of different gaskets, but I will put the one that I liked and seemed to work well. I'll put it on my website, disasterrepair.com. If you want to order some, you can. It takes two gaskets uh, to seal up with the full-size can, so I'll sell them in pairs. That way you don't have to order two. Um, but I'll sell them in pairs. And I might also pick, so these, some of these gaskets are really great. Um, some of them are, are thicker, some of them are, are larger. So if you have other items that you want to seal up, for example, a gun safe or um, a fire safe or, or even a, an ammo can, a large ammo can, you can make some measurements yourself and decide what size gasket you think will work um, and then order the gaskets and, and seal them up. The gaskets are um, all do a remarkable job. They're just a conductive material to help seal up that gap. All right, thank you for your time.